okay, guys, so welcome, everybody. Uh, in a minute, this is going to work, so I'm going to hand this to these guys. So welcome to the, uh, this fishbowl session on uh, civic tech and uh, democracy. No, just too loud. Closer, even closer, okay. Um, so my name's Eddie Adams. I'm going to facilitate this session. Um, we're going to focus on uh, something which is kind of blindingly obvious to most of us. That blindingly obvious thing is there is a crisis in our democracy. Uh, two words probably help us understand to some extent that crisis. Those two words are Donald Trump. I hope there are not many Trumpistas in the room. I suspect not. So um, this one's working now. All oh, right, brilliant, fantastic. Okay, so we've got this crisis in our democracy. You can see it through uh, falling voting rates. You can see it through lower participation. You can see it through widespread disaffection. Um, Happily, there are some reactions to that. Uh, we see things like the uh, crowdsourced uh, constitution in Iceland. We see in cities like Melbourne attempts to use sortition, so choosing citizens to uh, make decisions and use budgets. We also see uh, in places like Brussels, the G1000 experiment, again, involving citizens more directly in democratic decision making. But we also have some really exciting stuff happening in relation to civic tech. Civic tech gives us a real opportunity to do things differently, to speak directly to a whole range of audiences, to hold politicians to account, to try and reframe some of those conversations. So that's going to be our focus today. Um, let me say a bit about how this process works. So um, we've got a, an inner circle. Uh, some of these seats are empty. Um, I'm going to introduce the people who are sitting there at the moment. Um, and what we'd like you to do, once we start the conversation, if you want to say something, and we'd like to hear from you, because we know that you guys know as much as any of us know in this room. So uh, if you want to say something, you just come forward, and you sit down, and you say your piece. I know the microphone's there, that's fine, crouching. Uh, you say your piece, you ask your question, you make your comment. When you're finished, and you're done, go and sit down again, free up for somebody else. Yeah? So the idea is, instead of a kind of static Q&A thing, Ideally, ideally, we get a nice, fluid conversation which is open, participative, and as democratic as we can manage it. Okay, so that's the plan. We've got about 45 minutes, uh, so let's keep it snappy. And if you've got po po points to make, just come and make them very quickly. I've also briefed the guys in the middle to say, uh, just give us a short input. Their brief is to tell us a bit about um, just briefly what they do, uh, and then what they see as some of the big ticket issues that we should be engaging with in this conversation today. Yeah, so that's it, so let's go. So first of all, we're gonna have three people who have got a city take. They are all working in Berlin. They just met one another outside. We had the briefing conversation, that's what happens at events like this. You all work in a city and you never bump into each other. So uh, we've got uh, Anja Handler, uh, Adler, who's doing some work with Open State Berlin, raft building, all sorts of other interesting stuff you're up to. Uh, we've got Reuven Bruce, who's the chief exec of Liquid Democracy which some of you may, may have seen the, the site, some really interesting uh, participative platforms involved in uh, uh, some, some work with Berlin City, which maybe you'll, you'll tell us a bit about. And we've also got Eloise. Eloise, remind me of your surname again? Luman. Luman. Um, also with uh, a perspective from Berlin. So just to kick things, kick things off, Eloise, maybe first of all, tell us a little bit about what you do and maybe share with us, if you will, some of the key things you think we should be talking about in this session. Yeah, it's one of <laughs> Try that one. Yeah. Can you hear me? Ish? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, you can hear me. I can hear myself. Um, so basically, we're from Civocracy. We're a platform for participative democracy. Um, and uh, one of our key points is that we're not only based in Germany, but also in the Netherlands and in France, and willing to expand to other countries, because we think that some issues that we have in many uh, European countries can be replicable and can be discussed collaboratively with citizens in those countries as well. Um, I think the takeaway from being based in three different countries is the thing I would like to present today because we face many different opinions on citizens about democracy on this topic. Um, for example, in Germany, we have a lot of struggle towards uh, data privacy. In the Netherlands, no issue at all with data privacy, but more issue about the impact, what are going to be the impact of the discussions on the site, and in France, it's uh, more an um, 
an unknowledge, a fear of, oh yeah, we need to do something digital, but we don't know what, what are we supposed to do, what, what is the thing? Um, so I think that's the thing that I would like to present. Okay, thank you. Can you pass the mic round? Anya, what's your, um, what's your, just tell us a bit about what you do and maybe some key, key messages you want to kick us off with. All right, so uh, I have been doing some research on liquid democracy, uh, so delegative voting and deliberation and more flexible decision-making structures for the last four years, almost like ethnographic research following these two groups in Berlin around uh, that created the software liquid uh, feedback and democracy and really tried out liquid democracy in political pra practice um, and I guess what I, I would like to uh, discuss in the circle is that organizational model, governance model and business model of these organizations really matter. What we've seen in the last four to five years is a kind of shift from a duocracy towards a more software as a service, participation as a service, a more business oriented approach to software development and I'm not sure if this is the real like basic uh, or the most um, yeah, important um, structure to create uh, civic tech. And I think around the world we see really interesting other models like Lumio trying out a more cooperative structure mm -hmm. or uh, also um, the Our Cities model from South America, from Brazil. And uh, I hope we can talk a little bit about this. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, as we pass over, uh, if you want to join the conversation, don't be shy. Come and take a seat. Uh, chip in. It might be a question, it might be a comment. So don't feel free just to get us started. Come and come and take a seat. So let's just keep going around the table, around the floor. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. M uh, my name is Ruven Brüse. Um, I come from Liquid Democracy Association um, in Berlin. And um, since 2009, we, as an NPO and NGO, we work in Berlin and we develop open source software for online participation. One of the softwares is called Adhocracy, the one that Anya just mentioned. Um, one of our biggest projects right now is an, a central participation platform for the state of Berlin, under mine.berlin.de, where citizens can participate in all, let's say, participation processes that the state of Berlin has to offer at any time. And we are step by step further developing this platform to include more and more participation processes that already exist offline to also have them um, online. And um, we started in 2009 as, a, as an, an NGO with uh, three or four people, five, six people, and we were pretty idealistic in the beginning. I don't know who of you knows um, the concept of liquid democracy. We might talk about that as well. So we had ideas of how to change democracy, how to change democratic prax practices, and so on and so forth. And over the years, we realized that um, the real world out there might have not been ready for Ooh. these as nice as they are, perhaps radical ideas. And so we tried to adapt to that. And my thesis for today, for this, this discussion, would be that um, we need a cultural change, a cultural democratic change, because online participation or participation in general is not really accepted in the democracies that we, we live in. OK. Can you say a little bit about liquid democracy as a concept, just so we're all on the same page? Yeah. Um, I think Anya is the better expert on that. Um, <laughs> there are various conceptions. Um, I think the easiest way to explain it would be with delegated voting. That's the most common way to explain it. Delegated voting means that through an online software, you can delegate your vote to someone else who can then represent you in a matter that you chose. But you always have the choice to either s voice, yourse voice yourself directly on, on issues or to delegate your vote. That's like the general principle. And the idea is obviously that you, you could uh, scale this to a whole state so that in every parliamentary session, ideally, maybe with an e-identity, you could vote directly or delegate your vote to your friends who then delegate the votes further and so on. So this is a more liquid approach to democracy between direct and representative democracy. Okay, okay. Feel free to join in, folks. Jump into this conversation. Uh, don't, be, uh, don't be reticent. Um, can I just ask you about the city of Berlin? Because um, Francesco, who's been running back and forward uh, with the mics and everything, he and I did a piece for The Guardian about a year ago on uh, social innovation in Italy. Um, and one of the challenges that came out of that conversation was... Uh, uh, Spaghetti Open Data, who are working in Italy, said uh, if you're civic hackers and you're looking to work with the city authority, quite often the city authorities just don't really know how to, how to engage. Do we, do we commission you? Do we, con you know, do we contract you? Do we, 
So, so you know, there are one or two exceptional cities. Bologna is always the one that comes up. But, you know, th that mindset and attitude among cities was, was a kind of a real difficulty for them. I imagine Berlin's a bit easier, but I might, I might be wrong. I mean, how, how, do, how does Berlin, how is Berlin as a, as a place to work with, with its municipal hat on? How easy? I'm, I'm looking at all three of you at the same time here. I'm not sure which one of you is going to... So I'm not personally working with the city of Berlin. Can you still hear me? Ish? Okay, Amazing. cool. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not per se working with the city of Berlin, but I guess this uh, situation of working with a municipality is the same everywhere. Even though Berlin is famous for being a digital proactive city, it's not a matter of that. It is still an administration, and I guess the, those issues are issues that are relevant throughout Europe, throughout the world, mostly. Okay. You guys agree? I mean, just on the Berlin thing, any, anything else to add? I'm also not working with the administration in Berlin. I'm a researcher, but from my comparative research, at least for looking at the Pirate Party and the um, Berlin use cases, Berlin is still most advanced compared to most other places in Germany, so, yeah. Okay, and can you tell me, because got, we've got someone who's coming. In, in terms of the characteristics, if we're looking at what are the characteristics of cities who do this well, mm -hmm. what are the things about Berlin? And we might be in the danger of straying into stereotypes, but what are the things about Berlin that, that you think make it better placed than some other cities to, to engage in this effectively? Mm -hmm. I think one argument I've heard from the communities that develop technology in this regard uh, is that Berlin is comparatively small, so the community really knows each other well, and they know what each one is doing, and the network's really strong, so mm -hmm. I think it's a good ground for developing technology okay. and Great. putting it into practice. Fantastic. Yeah. Do you want to pass the mic down that way? We've got someone who's just come in and joined us. Can you just tell us who you are, where you're from, and just uh, make your point? Okay. I'm Julia. I'm from Vienna, but I just moved to Berlin, and I've been moving around a lot, but I happen to still listen to that Austrian radio station called FM4, and it's a very international radio station, it's usually in English, and a big topic is always that the, a lot of the, of the hosts, they're not allowed to vote in Austria. So one of the, of the Austrian hosts actually said, I'm not going to vote this year, so I offer it up, like, if you want me to vote fo for you and you live in Austria, like, write to me. And we're shut down because it's illegal to, like, give out your vote. <laughs> so I wonder what, what this would look like in Germany or how liquid democracy can work with that. Oh, great point. Yeah, how, how, how yeah, would that work? That's a good question. Um, at the, at currently, I don't think it's possible, and I think um, that's maybe something from my, from my initial statement. We, we realized in working with the administration that these processes are really, really slow. So um, we started in 2009 and three, four years ago we applied for this project. Three years later we got it. Now since one and a half years we're working on it. And maybe to tell a little anecdote um, of how little the progress is and how radical for the administration this progress is, um, I always like to mention the um, um, land use plans land use plans. So um, in Germany, if the city plans to construct something somewhere, they um, make a suggestion and then everyone who lives in the area could go to an office, have a look and then m make a statement like, uh, I don't like this because it might, I don't know, be too loud and so on and so forth. I think this neighborhood needs to develop in this direction. And then this land use plan is continued and so on and so forth. And after three years, you might get a letter saying, thank you for your statement. Unfortunately, we couldn't include your, your ideas, but thank you for participating. And the first step that the administration wanted is to have this land use plans online. So that was very radical for them already because, um, yeah, we meet a lot of a lot of skepsis in the administration because they're, they don't know what it means if something is online, they feel vulnerable, they, they think that a lot of extra work is coming towards them. And so all the districts in Berlin had a meeting to discuss what this, this field looked like, should look like online. You have a title, you have a statement field, maybe you have to put your address. And all the districts have different kind of approaches to this formula, to this form. So for them, I think it took over a day, this meeting, for all the districts to agree on a standard. And for them, that was the most radical thing that happened in the last two years. And for us, this was everyday work, you know, UI, you put the field here, the button there, 
how this, does this should look like. And um, so this is just an example of how small, from our perspective, the progress is in some respects and uh, how radical it is perceived from the other side. Okay, yeah, so things there about managing expectations, mindsets, kind of the cultural way that these admi large administrations work, all of that is kind of in the frame. Um, thanks for your, your comment about Vienna, really, really interesting. We'd love to hear about other cities, because uh, you know, as part of this conversation, if we could pick up where are the places where things are going well, where are there some interesting examples of practice that we should maybe know about, where are there things that are being tested and tried which are different? We'd love to hear about some of those. Um, Hi there, I'm going to pass the mic to you and then I'm going to bring in some of our other speakers. So let's just pass the, the mic down that way and then we'll bring um, Matisse in, in a sec. Hi there, Hi. tell us who you are, where you're from. Uh, I, I come from Brussels, so I am an entrepreneur. I'm building on, uh, on new currencies. So, and I am concerned with democracy, but uh, maybe not uh, in the pattern we know it, because by the techniques of writings of our civilization, but of course on one side, we have the enterprise world uh, with its market in our social democracy. In the other side, administration, where we have uh, our political instance with representation. And uh, basically, uh, this you inherit from that because civilization is based on writing techniques. You fill your uh, tax form, the political instances redistribute based on a project. You want to participate more to a project, to a budget, but with new techniques, the patterns is not the same anymore. You will embed in the currency decisions. So we can discuss political democracy today without considering financial democracy because the place where you will take decision will be at work, directly in economy, not in a chamber even direct chamber, <laughs> but a job on, on, on the real life decision, mastering the budget will be a daily activity, not a political time, extra job political. We still have this for some decision, but there is a lot of responsibilities moving from chamber to direct financial democracy to preside over your economy. So I wonder what you do in liquid democracy that I discover now, uh, or you uh, address this question that there is a shift from uh, politics to financial democracy, direct financial democracy. Direct, I don't believe really that uh, when you have, since uh, antiquity, since Greece, even if you can vote, you have to push people to vote. So the crisis we have is normal. When you have worked 40 hours a week, you don't want if the sun is awake to go to vote. In Belgium, you, it's an obligation. You have to go to vote anyway. If it's sunny, you don't go. <laughs> so you know, that's, that's normal. So you, you can't ask people to uh, in participate, uh, have the energy to participate in an extra time to uh, democracy. It's not realist. So the financial democracy is good in the sense that will be a daily activity and not uh, an extra uh, involvement because it's too much as to people. Okay, uh, make it easier. Yes, make it easier. Make it e easier. Okay, yeah, okay. Doesn't, are, are we, isn't, isn't this making it easier? I mean, in some way, you know, um, you know, part of the difficult, you know, one of the, one of the frustrations is it should be much easier, um, but people still don't take up the opportunity. I mean, it, it, this, this is surely, are you, are you, do you see, um, more young people, for example, who, who are turned off by lots of politics, are they more likely to be, uh, do you see more of them actively involved in the kind of work that you guys are doing? Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Um, why don't you hang on to the mic? I'm gonna ask you to, pardon? No, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you in because I think okay. we should kind of widen our, well, let's, let's take a step back and widen our kind of perspective a little bit. So we we'll have be talking about cities. Um, we also have in the circle people who are taking a bigger picture view of things, also working in the same space, still working around civic tech and politics, but from a different, uh, different angle. And um, Leonard de Roquefui, um, you're working with uh, Vox, who got a fantastic website and doing some really interesting things to, to make informed decision making easier for citizens who find all of this stuff a, deadly boring quite often, and B, quite opaque. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do, and then maybe just chip in on this conversation, if you will, and tell us some key things you'd like to share. Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we started at Vox.org uh, working on elections. 
because what we realized is that there is tons of information out there, but you know, any of us is just overwhelmed really fast and we, well, we have life going on and stuff and why should it be so complicated and complex and long and boring to be a citizen at the end of the day? So what we do is that we build a tool that we wish we had um, to just get easier information more accessible, uh, to also learn how to get involved in a really straightforward manner. So, for example, in terms of elections, what we have, found, uh, what we have created in 2012 for the French presidential election was a comparison tool. So you pick two candidates, one topic, and then you see exactly what is the candidate's policy on this topic. So housing, health, security, etc., etc., which makes it very easy to just go and vote or not vote because you've understood what the candidates are offering and you're deciding in conscience to not go to vote. So that's one thing, but that's working great and we've uh, spread it in 16 countries now, uh, in pretty much all continents uh, except uh, Oceania. <laughs> Uh, coming next um, <laughs> and we are also working now on day-to-day day -day politics so people can register we have created an, an interactive newsletter that's called what the Vox um, and you can register on a few topics that you're interested in so let's say I'm interested in um, housing because I work in the sector or whatever and then I will receive everything that it's new in the policy-making area on housing with objective uh, keys to understand how it works. And then at the end, I will see exactly what I can do to act on this new policy, uh, either in favor or against it. So that's one thing. And other than that, we're creating a school that is called the Vox Academy, and it's a school for citizens who just want to learn how to be more engaged. It's a boot camp. Um, so, yeah, for us, it's all about the civic tech that will work. It's not about the tool at all. It's really much more about how do we address people who are not engaged at all, which is 80% of the mm -hmm. population, 98% of the population. It's us and all our friends. So I think that's something that all of us working on civic tech with great tools have to think about. The tool might be really sexy and stuff, but if our best friend or our flatmate or our boyfriend is not going to use it, then it's wrong. Okay, okay, thanks for that. Do you want to pass the mic along? So still in the theme of making it easier, making it, making it, you know, why is it so hard for people to, 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 to do this key bit of citizenship, which is voting, participating, making decisions, a key part of our democracy? Why do we make it so difficult? Let's make it as easy as we can. Did you want to pick up on that theme or one of the earlier comments? Uh, Okay, just yeah. tell us who you are, where you're from. Okay, so I'm Laura, I'm from Colombia. And so you told us that you are in many countries. I, I just want to know if you are in South America, because uh, actually, as I think everyone knows, we have a lot of problems with politics, corruption, and so on. So for me, it's a, like a really interesting tool. Uh, I didn't know this is, exists, so for me this is something you know, really special for cool. being today, uh, today here. Mm. And so my question is more about like your, your tool is, for example, in, in Europe we know that things in politics are better um, regarding other countries or other um, uh, continents, I, I would say. So how do you address, like, for example, these um, local issues, like in Latin America, we have a lot of corruption. And because of that, citizens, we are like really deception, um, um, disappointed, disappointed sorry, <laughs> disappointed. Uh, so we are not engaged in politics because we said, why I will engage with politics, <laughs> but because this corruption thing, it, it will continue and continue. So I'm not doing nothing. I, I'm doing anything, sorry. Um, so what about that? That's okay, so I want to pick up this point about transparency, 
Why, why vote when they, they, why, you know, they, they just why pay you taxes? Why vote? Because they just run off of the money anyway, that corrosive kind of circle, so... Maybe I can start and then Meori should sure. go. Okay. Um, yeah. So, thanks for your question. We are indeed in Latin America, uh, right now in Peru, uh, for the second turn of the election right now. Uh, we were supposed maybe to be in, to in Republican, Rep uh, Dominican Republic, uh, and we're going to be in Ecuador soon also. Uh, how does it work in those countries? We, also, we have the same issues in those countries <coughs> that in Africa, for example, where we are in Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso and countries where actually elections were bound to happen and then there were a coup d'etat, so it did not work. Um, so we actually work with the local people. We build a community of ambassadors who are people who are not necessarily engaged politically, preferably not, by the way. Uh, and then we work with them, we get to the candidates, we partner with the big media locally to have more power, and then we go to see the candidates, and many of them actually have no platform, no official platform. So we build up a questionnaire and have them answer exactly the same questions. And it's a great way to just start putting transparency on what the policies are. So I'm not saying this will change right now the way those democracies are working. However, it is a great way to put pressure on those people who are getting elected on one program, and we have it online. It's there. Okay, so thank you. I'm going to bring in um, Matisse, and then we're going to bring in... Maria, because we are, we've got 15 minutes to go, time goes fast, so Matisse, uh, say hi, tell us where you're from, mm. jump on this conversation. Sure. Hi everybody, uh, it's great to be here, I'm Matisse Bonzon, I'm from Brazil, I live in Rio, and I can give you a Latin American perspective, and m more specifically, Brazilian one. Um, we, are, we are a global network of citizen-led um, movements in cities, so networks, we have one in Rio, in Sao Paulo, we're opening up in Bogota, by the way. Um, and we, we have this big challenge that I think we have all here is like to make politics something more accessible, more interesting, more sexy, and more, more, more natural for people just to, to be part of that. And in real, we started with this perspective. Like we build tools, um, not only technology, but also strategy to help people organize and make public policies change it. Uh, on what they want to, to see uh, changing. And when we ask our members in Rio, for example, what are the main issues that they are worried about, the first one is corruption and transparency. And it's really a hot issue right now in Brazil after <laughs> there was yeah. a, a coup and our president was um, impeached, uh, in my opinion, legally, but it's a huge debate. <laughs> And uh, it's funny because the same party, which is now in power, which is the work party, Partido dos Trabalhadores, was also a party which is in the 80s, started very innovative uh, local democracy, participation democracy in local municipalities in south of Brazil, in Porto Alegre, for example. But some, is, there is something that we, 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 we lost in the last years. Now, now participating in politics for a Brazilian citizen in local politics is really complicated. They actually know Maybe not like Berlin, they, they don't even ask us and send a letter three years later to say thank you for participation. They don't, they don't want um, our opinion. And um, in, this, uh, in this movement, what Mel Hill and our cities have tried to do, we, we kind of, and I will connect with the gold rush, I think, which is a good point, is my provocation. We, we were very good on building membership, building strong lists of emails and making people participating with very low engagement, what we call click activism, which is, which is the, an entrance for people that are not in the student movement or as, uh, syn syndica or, uh, I don't know, uh, neighborhood. Most of the people have not participated in formal political institutions, so we are the majority. Well, we not. Actually, we participate a lot, I think. Maybe here, I don't know. But uh, people with less information, less access to education, and less time <laughs> don't participate much or just participate by click activism. And what with the challenge that we have, I think, as a, as a civil society organization uh, is actually to go, go beyond uh, membership and, and, and just eventual participation and actually 
um, try to build self self organizing uh, technology and information strategy so people can themselves start carrying on their fights, not depending on some like broadcast and email or top down structure like like me, Kasserf, the guy for personal democracy, says a lot, and and that's my my provocation. So if you know good good um, people that are doing well on this on actually providing technology uh, to people to self-organize and, and foster their causes. I'm really interested on. Okay, on thanks about Matisse. That. If I could just bring in um, Maria, because you mentioned that we clearly the, the presidential stuff that's happening in Brazil. And I mean, you guys are looking quite close to the presidential campaign in France, where 0.5% of the population are members of political parties. So a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the population choose a presidential candidate. So I think you've been working around this idea of making that more open, transparent. Just tell us a little bit about that work and, and maybe just jump onto the conversation, please. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria. I work for uh, laprimaire.org. We are actually an online platform um, that is organizing the first citizens open primary selections for the political election, uh, for the presidential elections in France. So we built an application that is allowing every citizen to actually present themselves as a candidate. And also we are allowing, um, we are encouraging people to also suggest someone that if they know that will make an excellent um, president. And one of our main goals with this project was also to put the citizen back in the center of the electoral process. And um, so to kind of remove this power from the, the, the normally the, the political parties' candidates. So it was about shifting this power back to the people, that people that will have this call or that maybe they, feel they felt capable of um, being mm -hmm. a good president, yeah, okay. they could actually have the tools to make this happen. And so we have been working on this. Today we have almost 200 candidates. These are unknown people from all over France, from different, um, from different backgrounds. And uh, we have almost uh, five, five, uh, 25,000 voters, so um, active voters on the application. So with this, we actually want to to encourage people to, to, to get back in, in the center of an electoral process. Um, so, um, oh, and Laura from Colombia, we <laughs> are now thinking of um, going international. France is our first um, part, but we are thinking about Latin America already and the rest of the world. So, yeah. Fantastic, brilliant. We're gonna move the mic over here. Get a couple of contributions from you guys. I'm going to bring Loic in as well shortly from Mavois. Hi there. Tell us who you are, where you're from, and right, I'm share I'm with us. I'm Xavier. I'm originally from uh, Belgium, but it's been seven years that I lived in uh, San Francisco. Um, and uh, I, I want to actually to, to follow up on what you just said, because we were asking if there were tools to empower people. Uh, and that actually that's one of those tools that, we are, uh, that I'm contributing to right now, which is Open Collective. And the goal is to make sure that people can um, not only sign up a petition to support a cause, but also put money behind that idea. Because it just like, actually we did the manifesto in Belgium, a uh, startup manifesto just to improve uh, the environment for startups. And so there were a lot of people signing the petition, but there was just no easy way for us to also ask people for money. And with money, it would have been empowered as a bottom-up grassroots movement to do more stuff. And so, I mean, I'm very interested in all this concept of uh, future of democracy and all of that. And so, I mean, we should talk more about okay. uh, this. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's important to find ways for people to be able to do more than just, hey, click here. Yeah. You should put your money where your mouse is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Loic, can I bring you in there? Yeah, tell us a bit about, um, just introduce yourself. Tell sure. us what you guys are up to. So, uh, my name Thanks. is Loic, and I am just me. And that's the spirit <laughs> of the collective. So ma voix means my voice. And the idea is to get uh, people elected uh, to the French parliament. So very much in the same vein that you would get a president elected in a better way. Uh, we think that it's a lot easier to take over one seat, one after the other in the 
a parliament. And we're actually doing that right now uh, in Strasbourg. Um, the member of the parliament said, okay, I don't want it anymore for some reason. And so Mavoie uh, made a draw of random people who applied, okay, I would like to be a candidate. There were 16 of them and you, we, you, we, we took the name from the hat and here is the candidate. The promise and the difference is that this candidate wouldn't be a politician. First, he is drawn randomly. And then his uh, mission statement is to relay the voice of the people who elected him or her, but also everybody who wants to say, okay, I would like the my voice parliament people to uh, vote in this direction to make another legislation. So that's really where the power is. And that's also probably the easiest way to get in. And you change the law, maybe you remove the president. So there is another idea which is uh, to change the Senate so that it's drawn randomly. But you, you can only do that if you change the laws. So maybe it's the way to uh, power this idea. So the gentleman here is trying to do that. There are a lot of initiatives to change things. So we're trying to do that. My interest is I need tools to do that. Once the uh, uh, member of parliament is elected, how will he or her get, well, it's a he in Strasbourg, so, uh, how will he uh, get the input from the citizens? So we have a lot of technology to choose from. Uh, we didn't choose. We just uh, implemented <laughs> Lumio and Democracy OS, and surprisingly or not, liquid democracy or delegative democracy is yet to be explained, so we don't have it yet, but maybe we should. So that's my question. Thank you. I'm going to keep going around because we've got about three minutes left. I'm going to bring in our colleague here who came in, got Hi. fed up, left again. Yeah, because bring the question was out of scope and now... Yeah, I yeah, no, no, that's the way it works, yeah. Um, I'm afraid, I, I've, I've got an open question for you all. Um, you keep on talking about tools, and the whole point, the whole, the weak point of democracy is that it's a system that is not self-consistent, it can be exploited. And to work, and not to reduce democracy to just a, a bunch of rules, it can, it must be fostered, it must be backed up with a culture of democracy. First, any proposal to foster a culture of democracy? I got a few hints, obviously. I know you're aware of the problem and not just, but still, I'm, a, I'm too afraid that this, is, this has not been discussed so far. And second, all these tools I learned in the private organization, and democracy can make it only harder on, from this point of view. The point is that tools make you faster, but if you go faster in the wrong direction, you are destroying society lots faster. Again, concerns, not a tech uh, luddist, okay? Okay, I'm gonna, can we, can we just make a, uh, can you just add your question? I, I, and, then, and then we'll it, begin to politically, I know Matisse has to go, great to see you Matisse, yeah. take care man. It will be very short, it's not so much. Oh, it's not working that one. We're it's not today. so much a question, um, but a personal question that I'm willing to see the world change for the better. And uh, it seems everybody wants this. Um, I can see a fragmentation or a, a, a big amount of possibilities that seems all to offer the same, but fighting for their own little, um, you know, parochial little. So, you know, I hear ma voix. I hear, uh, you know, la primaire. I'm very willing to see, see things change, but how to avoid that all those um, wishes get lost because they get fragmented. Okay, I'm going to uh, over there, then here, and then we maybe get some final wrap-up points before we so close. So shortly, yeah, you, you may be interested by uh, Synergie Démocratique, uh, which is a list of 300 fragmented initiatives. So, yeah, and uh, they're trying to get people together. It's a tremendous Fine. effort. Uh, regarding tools, I completely agree with you. Uh, I sit down, I, I'm a developer at heart, and that's my trade, so I know the danger of tools. But I sit at ma voix with people who use tools, the same tools they use with their family and their friends, and they are not tools for democracy. And there is a complete disconnect between the people and the tools that I hear about here. And uh, so my, uh, I 
I would like that to be reconnected in a sensible way, but I don't know how to do that. The danger okay. is not here. No one mentioned e education. Okay. This is a big topic we're going into. Uh, I've just been told they're going to close the doors and lock us all in if we don't finish shortly. So um, I'm going to take you and you, final comments, and then we'll have to go and find somewhere else to carry on. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. Uh, so hello. So I'm, I'm Virgil. I'm, I'm representing uh, Democracy OS in France and uh, also uh, Democracy Earth, who is, will, will be launched at the end of the month, who tries to apply blockchain to delegative democracy to go from uh, just polling to voting. Uh, I was just thinking, like, w I test a lot of tools like every day like to see what they can bring. And yes, we are all after like the, 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 the perfect tool to, to do the perfect thing. And uh, I think it's great that there are many tools and uh, I think they all apply to, to, to different uses. But I think we, should, we shouldn't go like after like the perfect tool for the right users because like uh, in the end, like democracy uh, that we observe on the web, on Wikipedia and on the different sphere that try to collaborate and take decisions online, it's all, uh, it's all about process and not so much about the tool. If, if you look at, uh, at, uh, at uh, how uh, the, the, the wikis work, it's not very beautiful, but everyone use it because it's all it's all yeah, it's all talk process. About it more when your son goes into jail because someone got the wrong crowdsourced policy. That's the whole point. Having yeah. a, a Wikipedia article wrong is lots way tolerable than having wrong public policies. Okay, I'm going to have to come in because I have to give Sorry, <laughs> one last TV? comment. Actually, a little bit building on this. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a fundamental, we narrow democracy down to the eff efficacy of the vote. Democracy is not the vote, right? It's a, the, the vote is like the cherry on the cherry on the cherry of the cake. V democracy is a democratization of capital, knowledge, agency, and then organization. Then you have democracy. The tool is doing nothing if you don't actually democratize capital, knowledge, Dumb people who don't know the situation can make very bad democratic decisions. So this is why if you look at the history of democracy in Europe, we, what did we do? We built free banks. We built banks for the poor. We built free schools. We built libraries. Then we did the vote. The vote was the last thing we solved. We didn't do the vote first. So the question is, if we're going to reboot democracy, let's beat the stack of democracy, not the illusion of the vote. The vote is irrelevant in the story. So, with that, I'll I'll yeah, with that, thank you, all of you. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's go and carry this on somewhere else. Okay, over to you, Richard. Yeah, to go to up. a bar. God, it's, it's late. You should. <laughs>